picture of the cat in the hat, the f- cover of the book, and the cat has... The Dr. Seuss book. Yes, the Dr. Seuss book. You know, uh, w- and the cat has a mask on. And I thought, oh, that's cool. And then I said, well, no, no, that, that's cool, but we got we to take it the next step further. <laughs> so I wrote this poem, which is, yes, in the style of Dr. Seuss. It's called, I am the cat with the mask. I am the cat with the mask. Why the mask, you ask? It's the thing for the task. I have an entire cask of masks. In their protection, I will bask. All will wear them at the mask. We ward off the sneezy blast. The mask stays on till infection's past. I am the cat wearing the mask. I am the cat wearing the gloves. I love the gloves hovering above. Surfaces grimy with the viri of COVID. Till sanitizer gives the nasties a shove. I will be the cat in love with the gloves. My grandfather was the cat in the hat. My hat has a face shield. Now, what is that? I can see where I go, where someone spat. I breathe through a mask full of quilting bat. I stand six feet away whenever I chat. I avoid near infection as if it were scat. When the stranger leaves, I spray the doormat. We disinfect everything instantaneous stat. And I am the cat in the mask, gloves, and the hat. Very good. Now, you know there's people who are going to listen to that poem, and they're going to think, that mask? I will not wear it in a store. I will not wear it. It's a bore. And they'll go on and on. (laughs) One will point out that at the end of that one, Sam tries green eggs and hams and likes it. So maybe if you try wearing the mask, you'll find out you like it. It beats being sick. That's exactly right. If I mean, if we... Just take a breath and and do the right thing. With uh, apologies to Spike Lee, let's just do the right thing, okay? Uh, if, how's it going to kill? Is it going to kill you to wear a mask? Is it going to inconvenience you? Yeah, it does. I mean, someone like me, I look better with a mask on. No one wants to see my ugly face. A lot of people don't like to wear them. In the summertime, it's a hassle. But you know what? It's not going to kill you, and it might save a life. It just might. It's the it, it it's a version of the seatbelt. That's a perfect example. Well, See, it's a perfect example. Well, the re- the re- the reason I wrote the poem is somebody who's never going to, never never going to read a scientific dissertation on you know how COVID spreads or this they might listen to a funny little poem. That's a great poem. Speaking of poets, how's your buddy Steve? He is doing quite well. Good. Good. He got his sight back with his. He had a, he had a cataract operation. He got his sight back. He can now read, and he's back to writing. Very good. He's your uh, your collaborator in uh, Palm Springs. Palm Desert. Palm Desert. Thank you for and, those of you who don't know. Now he's kind of stuck in Palm Desert for now, but there's worse places to be than Palm <laughs> Desert. Well, when she says stuck, he, she means in his house. Because if you look at the map. California is not a good COVID place to be. <laughs> yeah, and they've they've made a mess of California. That between uh, Gavin Newsom and Garcetti, they've just at first I thought they were doing the right thing, but they've just well, that's another story for another day. One 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 point that I'd like to make though, it's kind of interesting, and it, it breaks down by gender. Mm-hmm. You know, when this deal was, we're going to have to have masks came out. And mo- more women will wear masks than men, and that's not a prejudiced remark. They will. Why do you and, think that is? Well, I think part of it is, you know, women are somewhat more used to the, the phrase, you know, handed a lemon will make lemonade. And first of all, they got into sewing all these cloth masks. You know, I mean, this is where, you know, somebody says, well, can you have one? Well, no, but I got a sewing machine. I got this cloth that I've never used, and I got to find some elastic. But, hey, I can make these and give them away and, you know, to my friends and family, and, and they will feel, uh, uh, you know, they will feel protected. They will feel like we're taking care of them. That was my first, my wife and I's first mask. Uh, a friend of hers sewed some and gave them to us. 
you know, it's like, what can we do about this? Well, we can't do anything about the virus, but we can do something, you know, about protecting people, which is, you know, women have just generally, that's what they think about. They don't think about going to war as much as they do saving people. Uh, and then, of course, then it became a fashion statement. Uh, and I was really hopeful. And I expect I expected women to do this. And, in fact, the mask I wore over here, I've got a tie-dye T-shirt on. I had a, went and found a tie-dye mask to match it. But I expected women to do that. And then when they started coming out with the masks for, like, the baseball cardinals and the blues yeah. and, and all, every sports affiliation you could possibly think of, the Kansas City Chiefs, I thought, well, gee whiz, that's going to make the men want to wear their sports logos because, in general, they are more likely to run around in sports jerseys. A lot of the guys I work with have those cardinal right. masks, blues masks, et cetera. Right. And, and, you know, I was hopeful that maybe they would kind of be tricked into uh, wearing the mask because it was something from their sports team. And some people, some people have done that. But, you know, if you have to deal with this, you know, you can make it fun. It doesn't have to always be, you know, dour and, you know, worried and scared and, and anxious, you know, you can make it fun. And I think I think that's one thing that I think the women pretty much have tried to do, you know, in, in making these masks that people uh, are going to want to wear. I'll put it that way. Um, the Navajo Nation, un- quite unfortunately. They've is, been hammered. Yes, they have been hammered. They were supposed to get uh, $600 million from the federal government. It was hung up for an, a, a month and a half over some uh, picky, picky thing. Oh well, should we give this to these to Alaska natives or, or you know which which tribes get these and whatever? But anyway, they they have started making masks that are basically with American Indian designs mm-hmm. on them. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And you know, and 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 those folks. I mean, those folks. A lot of them don't even have water to wash their hands. I mean, they live in abject poverty. And because of that, they have a rate per per 100,000 higher than New York had at its uh, peak. Well, and and so many live in in close quarters with uh, multi-generational families, too, I believe, which, again, and uh, if if Junior gets it or if Dad gets it, that's a shame. But if Grandma or Great-Grandmother get it, that's more than a shame. Well, and it I could be a fatality. I have been kind of an advocate for this that even if you know, if you you know you got to spare twenty bucks, buy some masks and send them to an Indian reservation. You know, if you you send them, you can send them something they can use. You know, not just money. Well, that LA Apparel you know. Company I told you about that, uh, that that makes the masks that I bought. Many of them sold them to people who silkscreen logos and that onto them. And I started doing the math for these math the math for these people. Those masks are two dollars and eighty five cents a piece, and they're washable. I've had one now for months, uh, four of them actually for months, and uh, two dollars and eighty five cents a piece. They manufacture twenty one million a day. Do the math. Those people are making a killing. Well, provided they're selling them all, that's a, a large number. I, if they're just selling half, uh, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> a I'm day. just thinking the United States is three hundred uh, million people in it. Uh, in fifteen days, you would have the enough for every person in the country to have one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to say one other thing. Joe brought up the sex difference. If you look at the demographics, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, because you've looked at this. More men come down with COVID-19, but more women die of it. Interesting. And I'm just sitting here going, I don't know this for sure, but one looks at that and goes, okay, the men are too macho to wear a mask, but they bring it home and give it to their wives who then die. So here's a, here, here's a clue, guys. Protect your family. Wear a mask. That's part of what I'm talking about, convincing people to do the right thing. Uh, if you pass a law saying you have to wear a mask, that's not going to help. 
because there's a law that says if you're not a citizen of this country, you can't come into this country. And we all know how that's worked. Okay. So it, it, you, you can't pass a law. You've got to just convince people to do the right thing. Statistics like you just brought up, Eugene, that's the path towards doing that, in my opinion. Yeah, the, the basic problem is, uh, and there's been st- not, not just life experience, but study after study, going with the facts or going with your prejudice, people pick their prejudice. And it's awfully hard to break down. This is, gets back to what I was saying about ide- ideology getting in the way in some cases. Well, it's lack of trust, and quite often it's lack of trust based on uh, past history, to be fair. So, well, hopefully we'll get from point A to point B. Uh, the only problem I have is we have so many people say, well, shoot, they'll, they'll come up with a vaccine real soon. We always come up with a vaccine for a virus, right? Uh, the typical development time, though, people keep saying, hey, baby, we'll get this faster, is a fast tracked is two years. Yeah, well. How long has AIDS been around, which is a virus? There's no vaccine for AIDS. No. Uh, and, uh, well, and I tell you, this is where being somewhat educated is helpful, but I don't need to tell anybody who's watched the Internet that there's a lot of false information on there's it. There's a ton of false information. Uh, and one of the ways I caught some, which people pulled down, uh, not the people who posted it, but people who shared it pulled down, was somebody was telling people all this information about the COVID virus. And one of the things they said was uh, the structure of the virus is uh, it's got this center of DNA and immediate red flag went up. This is a retrovirus. It's genetic material is RNA, not DNA. And I knew whoever wrote that didn't know squat about the COVID virus, but your average person is not going to catch that. I wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have, but you did. Mm-hmm. And did you call them on it? I, like I said, as I couldn't get back to the original source, but there were two friends who had shared it, and I got back to them. And I used it's hidden well, but Facebook has a method for reporting false news, and I've turned in three of them in the last month. Was, were you successful in getting it off? It's hard to tell because often, the, the again, trying to trace back to the origin, but I've at least tried. And that's all you can do is try your best. Joe Shaper, Eugene Vale, thank you so much for coming out. And guess what? How much rain did we get during the podcast? Zero. Zero. You, Murphy stayed away. God wanted this podcast to happen because he wants you to wear masks. <laughs> there you go. Love one another. Wear a mask. <laughs> Joe, any passing uh, or parting, parting uh, words? Not really. Just hope we get all, all get through this all okay. Well, we will. We'll, we'll, we'll get, we will get through it. Uh, I can't tell you when. I can't tell you in what condition, but we will get past it. Just. Do the best you can, be considerate, be kind, and we'll all get through this together. Joe Shaper, Eugene Vale, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Well, that's it. We're done. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. James Strong Show at Hotmail.com. That's the email address. Send me your email. I will go ahead and uh, send you a link to the podcast upon publication. You can download it and then listen to it at your leisure. Uh, lots of different formats you can get the James Strong Show on as well. Uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Podcaster, SoundCloud, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or Spreaker.com, who is my, uh, my host network. Well, that's it. Until next time, this is James Strong saying adios.